Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to be comparing the Udo X86 Advanced Plus and the Latte Panda. Both of these single board computers can run Windows 10, and in this video I'll be comparing their hardware, looking at their Windows performance, and running a number of benchmark tests. So, here we have the uh, Latte Panda and the Udo X86 Advanced Plus. Just before we get to them, I thought I'd lay a concern, which is that in July 2017, Intel announced it was end of lining the Curry module which is used on this board. And therefore, quite a few people have asked me in the comments here on YouTube, will this remain available? And I therefore contacted Udo, and they told me they've had a meeting with uh, Intel and with other people in the Arduino ecosystem, and they're confident that the uh, Udo X86 boards in their current format will remain available until at least 2020. So do not worry, this hardware is not going to disappear from the market. Now, I'd also point out there are two different Latte Pandas available and four Udo X86 boards. So I'm obviously just comparing two of them here, but you might say I'm comparing the wrong two, but never mind, these are the ones I've actually got. But just to point out, this is the Latte Panda 464. This costs $149 and it's got 64 gigabytes of onboard flash storage. This is the Udo X86 Advanced Plus. This costs $165 plus taxes and shipping. This has got 32 gigabytes of onboard flash storage. And just in case you need to know, here's a table showing you both of the boards from Latte Panda and the four boards from Udo and what they cost currently in what a July, August 2017. Now, in terms of these boards specs, on the Latte Panda, we've got a quad-core processor. It is an Atom processor, an Atom Z8300, one at 1.44 gigahertz, and it's got Intel Gen 8 graphics on the board. In terms of the Udo, it has got a Celeron processor, also a quad-core processor here in N3160, running at 1.6 gigahertz, and Intel HD graphics 400. Both boards have got four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, as I mentioned already, there's 64 gigabytes of onboard storage on the Latte Panda. There's 32 on the Udo X86 Advanced Plus. That said, the Udo has got a click trick if we go around the back, which has got a couple of M.2 slots, and one of these can take an M.2 SSD, which means clearly you've got options for more storage. And on the Udo, which you haven't got on the Latte Panda, you've got here a SATA port, so you can connect a variety of extra drives onto the uh, Udo. Both of the boards can take a micro SD card. There's a slot here on the Latte Panda. There's one, where is it, on, on the Udo uh, up there. Uh, but you don't boot from those. You'll generally, or you can boot from that if you want to on the Udo, but you'll generally will boot from other flash storage and SSD or, or the onboard storage. In terms of other connectivity, both of the boards have got three USB sockets. Now, on the Latte Panda, you've got one USB 3 and two USB 2, whereas on the Udo, you've got a two USB 3 there and another USB 3 on the other side, where is it over there? So you've got three USB 3 here and uh, one USB 3, two USB 2 on the Latte Panda. And you might therefore say to me, clearly the Udo wins that comparison. I'm not sure it does, because if you have all of your peripherals, like your mouse and keyboard connected by USB 3, you can have problems. I've found both of these boards to be very stable, very reliable in quite long-term tests now. But the one problem I've had with the Udo board is that if you boot it on from cold as, it, as in you haven't had power connected to it, you do have to disconnect and reconnect the mouse to get it picked up by, by your operating system, both, both Windows and Linux. And that's because I'm sure the issue you're connecting your, your mouse via USB 3, not USB 2. So do be aware of that. It could be to the Latte Panda's advantage, it has still got some USB 2 ports. In terms of other connectivity, we've got an HDMI connector full size on both boards, as I'm sure you'd expect on a high-priced single board computer. On the Latte Panda, you can output a 1080p standard HD. On the Udo, you can output a 2160p, what many people call 4K, although technically isn't 4K, but let's call it 4K here. And you've got a couple of display ports on the Udo, so you can actually output to three different screens simultaneously, which is a really nice trick. So, that's the hardware. It seems to be an interesting uh, comparison to, to make. This is clearly a physically bigger board. If you want a smaller board, you want the panda a bigger board for the Udo. And as you probably notice on the back, you have got the battery for backing up the real-time clock on, on the Udo, which is nice. 
I'm going to now run some tests using Windows 10, which comes a pre-installed on Latte Panda. You can get a version with it pre-installed and activated or not activated. It's a $149 non-activated. You don't get an operating system with your UD4. It's a $165 either, so that's absolutely fair comparison. And what I'm going to do here is have Windows installed on the onboard flash memory on both boards. I've got to do that on Latte Panda. I could use Land.2 SSD to install Windows on this board. That doesn't seem a fair comparison, so both boards are going to be running Windows 10 from the onboard flash storage. Right, I've now got Windows 10 Home 64-bit edition running on both of the machines. You're currently here looking at the desktop on the Udo, but the Latte Panda looks obviously very, very similar. I thought I'd just start out by going to uh, this PC and doing a properties, because some of you might want to see that. So uh, on the UDU, as you can see, we have its Celeron processor here, four gigabytes of RAM, 64-bit operating system, etc. And if we uh, bring in Latte Panda, you can see it's got its uh, Atom Z8 300 ZPU and um, 1.44 gigahertz running there, same amount of RAM, etc. It's probably worth just showing you, because people always like to ask this, the amount of space Windows takes on the internal hardware here. So if I do a properties on C there, uh, you can see here on the UDU, it's a uh, look exactly split. It's using 14.5 uh, gigabytes for Windows 14.5 free. In fact, it's also on both these machines got Caden Live installed and GIMP installed and a few other bits and pieces as I'll come to in a second. If we compare that to the Latte Panda, it's actually got its 64 gigabyte internal flash storage rather than the 32. And here, I think the version of Windows has been optimized a little bit. Windows on the software is what using 12.9 gigabytes, 44.53 of the 57.4 actually available when formatted. Anyway, that gives you the basics. Let's now run some tests. So, the first test I'm going to perform is launching GIMP, which I've got installed on both systems. So I'll go down to the taskbar where I've got it pinned and I'll zoom down this screen so we can see both of our computers side by side. And then by the magic of filmmaking, I'll press the button at exactly the same moment and uh, we have a contest. And we'll see what happens. This is a test of both the processor power of the devices as they load in all the parts of GIMP, but also of course of the speed of that onboard flash storage that has to affect this test. And uh, it looks like I think the UDU is going to win, but it's going to be pretty close. GIMP always takes so long to load, doesn't it? But eventually, yes, there we are, uh, 21.6 seconds for the uh, UDU X86 Advanced Plus and 22.8 for the Latte Panda. Right, my second test is going to be a test very much of processor power. We're in GIMP, I've got an image loaded in, quite a large image, 3000 by 2000 pixels, and I'm going to apply a complex filter. So I'm going to go to Filter, Edge Detect and Neon, I'll use the default settings. I've used this as a test many times before. I like this test. And again, I'll press the button at exactly the same moment. And there they go. Very close this is going to be, isn't it? And it's going to be, what, a five seconds for the Udo dead and 6.4 for the Latte Panda. So the Udo has clearly got a little bit more practical real-world processor capacity. Right. I thought we'd now do a little test using the Caden Live video editor. So I've got it loaded up on the both machines. And I've got one clip loaded in a very, very simple edit of this uh, nice little robot up there. And what I'm going to do is to render this out and to see how long each system takes to, uh, to render it out. So I'll go to Project and uh, Render. And this is all set up to render. And I'll bring on screen the uh, Latte Panda as well. You're currently looking at the uh, Udo X86. And I'll click uh, Render to File and see how they do. And there it goes, going quite quickly on both, really. It looks like though the uh, Udo will win, as we would expect. Getting there, all oh, the tension is killing me. And um, what have we got? It'll finally give us a number. The Udo did 18 seconds, and the Latte Panda is going to finish off fairly soon, I'm sure, with uh, 24 seconds. So there we are, the Latte Panda is again a little bit slower, as you'd expect it to be given the difference in processors. But uh, again, both reasonable performance, what we can see, which is a faster machine. And just to prove it worked, there's the file here on the uh, Udo. Let's just play the file, full screen it. There we are, our robot is working, isn't that nice? This has been another successful test. 
So, I've now installed the latest version of Passmark Performance Test on both machines, and you can see it here running on the Udo X86, and I'll put a link to Passmark in the video description. Now, it was my intention to run a full set of tests on both boards, and to end up with some nice benchmark scores and all that kind of stuff with the numbers. But for some reason, when we get to the 3D graphics mark part of the test on both the Udo X86 and the Latte Panda, we get a video driver error. And I can't find a way to fix this, I've tried all sorts of things, and so therefore I can't run a full pass mark test. Now, some of the 3D tests, like this OpenCL simulation, run really nicely, as you, as you can see on both machines, with the Udo achieving uh, about 140 frames a second, and even the Latte Panda between about 70 and 100. But inevitably, when you get to the end of a test, we've only got a partial pass mark rating, of a, what, 651.7 for the Udo at Take 6 Advanced Plus, and 541.6 for the Latte Panda. Now, the CPU marks are certainly worthy of note. It's run all of those tests, and as you can see, we've got that 1930 for the Udo X86 and 1416 for the Latte Panda. And so we see that the Udo has got roughly a third more processing power, something like that, than the Latte Panda, which is consistent with our previous tests. We can also see it's got a little bit more 2D graphics power, but when it gets to memory and it gets to a disk mark, the boards are, are very evenly matched. Fortunately, in the Passmark Advanced tab, you can configure and run the 3D graphics test separately. And so here we have the DirectX 9 test. Now, sadly, running the test individually doesn't add them into a final Passmark score, but at least it allows us to see how they perform. And the Latte Panda clearly runs the DirectX 9 test slower than the Udo. It achieves about 12 frames a second to compared to about 26 frames a second for the Udo X86. And as this final screen tells us that, just in case you're wondering if I got it right. Now, I thought I'd stress the board out finally with this DirectX 12 test. Um, this, I know, is a rather unfair thing to be running on, on these boards, as neither the Latte Panda or the Udo X86 are remotely intended for gaming, or they could run sort of fairly, fairly sort of lightweight games. But it's always nice to take a look at some spaceships and some asteroids as we can see here, even if a Latte Panda only manages to output them about, what, about five frames a second just under, and you do at just over seven. Anyway, there we are. I think that brings our testing to a close. I really like the Latte Panda and the Udo X86 Advanced Plus. They're both very good machines, and in some ways I don't quite like doing a head-to-head -head of these boards because they are both great machines. I would recommend heartily both of them. But they clearly have pros and cons. If you want the cheaper board and the smaller board, you go for a Latte Panda, and the out-of-box experience here is fantastic. You just get it out of the box and plug it in. Uh, it isn't difficult to set up an Udo X86 Advanced Plus, but it takes a little bit more time than Latte Panda where you just turn it on. But if you want a more flexible board, which is slightly bigger and a bit more expensive, you go for the Udo. Not least because you've got the SATA port and the M.2 slot on the back for the SSD, so you can connect this to all types of things. The other thing I would say is that the Latte Panda is definitely a Windows single board computer. It's got images for Windows 10, and it's difficult to get it to run other operating systems. It is possible, so I've read and heard, but it is tricky because it doesn't have a standard bootloader. In contrast, the Udo X86 Advanced Plus can install pretty much anything you like. You can install Windows, all sorts of Linux distributions, and Android, all sorts of things. So if you want the flexibility of different operating systems, you should go for the Udo. But as I've said, they're both great boards. They're both far more powerful than something like a Raspberry Pi, but then they cost more, which actually reflects that. And I guess the final thing I'd say is they've got different levels of power. As we've seen, the Udo is more powerful than the Latte Panda by a some distance, not an enormous distance. But you have to think if that extra power is what you really need, because both of these boards are powerful enough to run all the standards of the things you might run the computer in terms of web browsing, media, playback, office applications, and things. They'll both do that very well, much better than the sort of lower cost single board computers. But they won't run, as we've seen, high-end gaming and high-end video editing and things like that. So you have to decide if the extra price is worth the bit of extra power. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.